Thank you so much for your time. So congratulations on the release of your new album. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, things a little bit of a delay. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. I was saying congratulations on the release of your brand new album. How does this record define you at this current chapter of your life? Oh, man, I think it's uh, exactly where I'm at in life right now. You know, as far as being a, a, a dad and a husband and, um, you know, after doing this for 13 years in country music, I feel like I've got a pretty good handle on songs I want to write, the style that I sing in and all that. So uh, to me, I think it's the most me record I've made yet. So, so you co-wrote 12 of the 13 songs on this record with your good buddies in the beautiful mountains of North Carolina. Tell us about that songwriting experience. Yeah, it was unlike anything I'd done before. I mean, I, I don't think songwriting retreats are a new thing. People have been doing them a long time, but it was new for me. So um, just getting out there, you know, in the mountains where, you know, things move at a slower pace. And, um, you know, we put the phones away and all that and just had our guitars. And um, it was just like buddies hanging out while we were writing country music while we were doing it. So it's pretty fun. And I, I think creatively it took us to a different place. So we wrote some songs we might not have written, you know, just you know, in Nashville or, or chilling like we typically do. So as a songwriter and having enjoyed uh, six number one singles, what would you say is the most challenging component about going in and trying to put together a potential hit song or so you would hope it to be one? Yeah, you know, I think it's challenging to not try and, and go chase what's the hot thing right now, you know? I mean, I've uh, in, in my career, I've seen the hot trend change 20 different times, you know, so uh, just as soon as you start chasing something, it's going to change into something else. So I think you just have to um, believe in what you're doing and, and write from the heart and, you know, hope people connect to it. And, you know, I find that typically they do because, you know, if you're honest with yourself and your songwriting, you know, uh, we're not any different as songwriters or artists than anybody else out there. You know, we all go through the same things in life and challenges, ups and downs and, so I feel like we're a lot more alike than we are different and people relate to your your honest stuff. So while most artists in the business live in Nashville, I know you've decided to reside in your home state of North Carolina. Why is that important to you? And are there any challenges that come with being there versus in Nashville? Yeah, it definitely has its challenges. Um, you know, just not being here for for all the events and even relationship building, I feel like, you know, I'm not as tight with with some folks or artists in the industry as I probably could be if I lived here and was seeing them every day. But for me, it's just my roots are so deep in Carolina and my family's still there. My friends are still there. My friends when I was two and three years old are my best friends now, um, which I, I think is kind of rare when you're 30. So uh, it's just uh, it's just where I want to be. And I've found a formula that works as far as how to make records, write songs, tour while, you know, living there instead of Nashville and as long as it keeps working, I think I'll, I'll stay put. Which part of North Carolina are you in? Um, I'm in Raleigh, right smack dab in the middle. Nice. Yeah. So congratulations on becoming a member of the Opry. I know you Thank were invited you. by Garth Brooks and then joined by Randy Travis and Josh Turner on your induction April 20th. Doesn't get better than that. Uh, what mm -hmm. was going through your mind in both those moments, the, the night Garth was there and then the night of your induction. Yeah, the the invitation night with Garth, um, I was just shocked more than anything. It just wasn't on my radar screen. And uh, I just thought it was another normal Christmas show and we'd be in bed before you know it. But um, you know, Garth and the Opry had other plans, which I'm so glad they did. And then, you know, the induction night, it was just such an emotional night. And it was a lifelong dream come true. And I knew Josh was going to be there. I didn't know Randy was going to be a part of the induction. So that was a huge surprise for me and an honor, you know, to have uh, a country music legend like himself on stage there. So um, just an emotional night and dream come true. All my family was there, my friends. It just meant the world to me. So Almost full circle, too. I know Josh is like a mentor to you, and I'm sure you look up to Randy Travis, too. It's kind of cool to have those three generations of traditional country. Yeah, it was very full circle. Josh was, has been a, a big part of, of my love for country music even before I got started doing this professionally and um, knew all his songs, had all his records. And Randy Travis, you know, 
is is a guy that you know three wooden crosses was a staple in my shows back in the day when I was you know back in Carolina before Idol or anything. So that's uh, super cool. Yeah, Josh is great. So Absolutely. being just thirty years old, what does the Opry mean to you, and why is it important for you to embrace traditional country music? Which thank you for doing that because that's my favorite. <laughs> Yeah, I'm glad to hear that. Um, you know, for me, I'm an old soul, even though I'm just 30. I, I, I'm very big on tradition, very big on history. And um, I, I love the Opry for for all that it is, all that it's done for country music. I feel like people, you know, kind of forget about how huge of a role it played back in the day for the, you know, making country music popular outside of just, you know, some small pockets from the South, you know, that radio signal went a long way. So, um, all my heroes have played there. A lot of them are, are members there. So to be able to join that family is, is really, really crazy. Now, I know family is very important to you. Uh, how did you meet your beautiful wife and what's life been like with your little boy, Avery, right? Is his name? He's so cute. Yeah, <laughs> he's hanging out right here with me. Um, huh. I've got a bunch of nieces and nephews, all little babies, too. They're, they're the best. Oh, it's, it's so fun. No. Um, there he is <laughs> but yeah we uh me and my wife met a long time ago in uh elementary school i think honestly kindergarten so um we we grew up together through school and through the years and we're always friends and uh our senior year of high school is when we started actually dating but been together ever since and little avery is 18 months now um and he's just uh got a big old personality and and he's he's a ball of fun a lot of energy too sometimes too much energy but um, I think he gets that from his daddy. Well, God bless your family. <laughs> Thank you very much. Appreciate it. So how have you guys adapted to road life being out, you know, living out on a tour bus? Any interesting or funny stories you could share with the family? I um, mean, there's always something. It's uh, it's a different ball game, you know, going out on the road with the family as opposed to just me and the band. And, but it's awesome. You know, we, we have me and Gibby and Avery. We even bring the dog moose out there a lot of times. So, um it's one of those things where you just got to adapt and, and learn and try new things. But um, I don't know if anything is like too crazy or, or funny or anything. I mean, Moose has escaped into the crowd a few times and we were not sure he'd make it back. One night was like a festival and 40,000 people and Moose just ran in the middle of them all. So um, we were like, well, we'll see if he comes back, but he always does. And, um, you know, Avery's done great on the road. He, he's a roadie already and knows the deal with concerts and, Loves the music, so that makes me happy. How is Moose your dog? Yeah, Moose is our dog. What what type of breed is it? He's a yellow lab. What is it? A yellow lab, Labrador. Oh, yellow lab. Oh, nice. Yeah. So when you think back to 13 years ago when you won the 10th season of American Idol in May of 2011, did you ever imagine, I believe you were 16, 16 or 17, right? I was, yeah. 16 imagine? audition, 17 when it finished. Okay. Did you ever imagine your 16-year-old self being where you are now? <laughs> um, it, it was the dream, you know, but do you really think it's going to come true is another thing. You know, I always wanted to sing country music. I remember back when it was just, again, the, the, the pipe dream kind of thing. But um, no, to think through all the years that we've been doing this now and to be a member of the Opry and um, songs that are working on the radio, um, uh, that's probably beyond my, my wildest dreams. This is, it's been pretty, pretty awesome. I think the Opry is the best. I'm glad to see that they made you a member because there's some situations where I've seen some people that are not really what I would call country, but I was telling your manager, George Jones is my all-time favorite, and I love Joe Nichols and, of course, Josh Turner, but I, I'm happy to see someone in your generation that will carry that traditional country sound because it's important it, there's the opry you know is everything in country music yeah it, it's the pinnacle of country music in the best states to play in country so uh, i appreciate that you know traditional country is what i grew up on too so um I, i've always tried to do my best to blend what i love and the traditional side and uh, a little bit of what's going on today as well and and uh try to try to make it all happen so and I was blessed to get to know Loretta Lynn. That was one of my first interviews years ago when I started this website. And I got to know her personally to the point where she'd come to town or I'd see her in the area and watch her from the side of the stage. And we've prayed together on the bus, ate together, laughed together, and I miss her. But 
I'm thankful for those memories. But I, I mean, I'm sure, I hope you got to see her live. There was like nothing like it. it one of the most coolest experiences. Yeah, that's one for me that I, I'm sad. I never did get the chance to uh, to see her live, but I, I'm such a fan of her music and her, her legacy. And I even named my truck Loretta back home because I just uh, admire her so much. So um, it is pretty cool at the Opry. I, I've, I've gotten I, I, my mailbox. You get a mailbox when you join the Opry, and my mailbox used to be hers. So pretty oh, pretty wow. cool history there for me. Really? That's that's really cool. Yeah, it's pretty special for, for a guy that loves history like me. I, that means a lot. She was one of a kind. I best way I could put it is when you'd see her in concert, it was almost so surreal. It was like being taken back to the era of like the Patsy Cline. I don't know. It was just very cool experience when you would be able to see her perform. Yep. She was one of one. Absolutely. So you, you originally planned to audition in Nashville for American Idol, but you passed on that because I believe it conflicted with the annual church camp, right? It did. A lot yeah. of people would say, well, you passed your opportunity with fate and you traveled instead to Milwaukee. But I think that was kind of cool because I feel like your faith and conviction has blessed you tenfold. Would you agree or could you elaborate on that? Yeah, I mean, I think so. I, it's, it's the number one most important part of my life, you know, is my faith. So, um, and that church trip outside of just my faith, it was fun. And my friends were there. And if you know me, like friends and family and faith, it, it's everything for me. So um, it wasn't that tough of a decision, to be honest. And luckily, my dad traveled for a living. So, you know, he had so many miles with the airlines. We, we could kind of fly wherever for free with, with his points. So um, it, it worked out. But and honestly, looking back, it wasn't the reason. But I, I do think there were probably you know, a million country singers that auditioned in Nashville, whereas in Milwaukee, I kind of stuck out like a sore thumb. So that, that, that might have even helped me a little bit, even though I wasn't thinking about that. Yeah, that could be. Yeah. Well, I appreciate your time. Hopefully, I don't know if Scott told you, we're going to have you on the cover of Country Star Central for the whole month of June. Awesome. And Very uh, cool. I bought this on Amazon. It's awesome. I really love it. Hey, well, Very I appreciate it. Thank you. It's my favorite one we've made yet. So I'm glad glad you enjoy. And thanks for having us on the cover and make, taking the time to interview. That's awesome. Yeah, and hopefully we'll see you at one of your shows. We'll we'll come see you on the road and present you with the cover. We usually get it framed and it's something that we do. So hopefully we can catch up with you somewhere along the road this summer. We'll give you that. We'd love to have you out. Absolutely. Anytime. And I've never seen you in concert. <laughs> oh, we gotta change that for sure. <laughs> right. My buddy, my buddy's from your home state. I, I, uh, I've gotten to know Kelly Pickler ever since she came off Idol and we've become friends, but I don't know where her town is in relation to where you are. Yeah, she's a Albemarle girl, so she's a little west, and, um, but it, she's not too far away. We're all, we're all fairly close in Carolina. Okay, I'm going to tell her I talked to you. I talked to her last week. <laughs> oh, good. Well, yeah, tell her I said hello. I love Kelly. I will. Well, thanks for your time. You guys have a blessed day. Yeah, absolutely. You too. Appreciate it. Take care. Bye-bye.